next couple of the races uh, are for the Breeders' Cup 2022. We've got the Classic to close us out, of course, but the Breeders' Cup turf uh, we uh, will have a look at at first. And, uh, well, what do you know if it isn't a, a Charlie Appleby uh, favourite? And now joint second favourite uh, with Nations Pride and, uh, and Rebels Romance. 9-4 to four Nations Pride, Rebels Romance is 4-1. to one. Splitting them is Warlike Goddess uh, in at 4-1 uh, to one, uh, for, for Bill Mott. And then 11-2 to two, Mishrift trying to... Um, sort of, I guess, salvage his reputation might be a bit harsh, but it's been a frustrating year for him. Uh, Stone Age is nine to one with Broom at fourteen to one. Say what you like about him, but uh, he ran a cracker in this last year. Highland Chief, uh, which you'll remember from a couple of years ago for uh, for Paul and Oliver Cole, is twenty to one. It's twenty five to one. Uh, bar those, uh, given that your beer beat Broom in this race last year, quite frankly, anything can happen. <laughs> um, but uh, Nations Pride and Rebels Romance have been in cracking nick. Uh, for Charlie Appleby, Nation's Pride again under the Globe Trotter, uh, and Rebels Romance again an aborted uh, experiment on the dirt. And Rebels Romance said, "Thanks, I was hating every second of that. This is what I want, and uh, to thank you for not running me in the dirt at uh, Maidan, I'm going to win every race uh, you uh, you throw me into." So, cracking lineup for the Breeders' Cup turf. Are we going to? I mean, like I said, if your beer can win, Rachel, then quite frankly, well, all bets are off or on. What do you think? I agree. Last year was just we'll just put a line through last year, but <laughs> but Nation's Pride is a very similar horse to your beer, mm -hmm. but he's actually gone more heavily American. He actually was stabled up at Saratoga during the during the summer, so Charlie Appleby didn't see a lot of him. And if it wasn't for a let's just say a, a less tactically astute ride by by a certain El Dottori, um, he would be three for three in New York. Mm -hmm. But his win last time in the Jockey Club Derby Invitational, I mean that's the same race that your beer won. He won it by six and a quarter lengths, and he did it really well. Frankie gave him a belter of a ride that day, slingshot off the turn, and he has the American turf turning sort of kick that yeah. you want to win this race. So for me, for me, of the two pair, Charlie Appleby is nation's pride, but my heart is with Warlike Goddess. She is the best turf horse in America. She's a she. Americans don't run girls against the boys in most races. In fact, while five filly and mares have actually won the turf, only 11 North American trained fillies have even contested it. And it's been a long time since there's been one. So Bill Mott just said the mile and 316, too short for Warlike Goddess. She's five for five over a mile and a half. She ran against the boys. She won against the boys in the chief U.S. prep last time out. She might be a little bit too slow if we're going to go head toe to toe in a final sprint to the line with Nation's Pride. But... While the head says nation's pride, the price and the heart say warlike goddess. Okay, warlike goddess is a four to one shot. Nation's pride nine to four. Interesting that uh, that poorly uh, judged Dettori ride was. It was in the height of the summer, where, um, as Mr. Gosden will tell you, he uh, he was a menace. Didn't have his eye on the ball. Mm. Uh, well, that's when he, they were they were having a break. They were for yeah. like three and a half minutes. And that's when he got the Charlie gave him two rides over in New York, so he went to the Big Apple for two rides. Yeah. But he's, um, he's, his, his eye is very, was very much on the ball last time out. Well, mm. um, yeah. he's, uh, he's not aboard, of course. William Buick is, uh, is on. He gets, yeah. he gets the job of trying to guide Mishriff in first-time blinkers <laughs> from Box 11. He does. He does. Um, good luck. Good luck. Um, yeah, he is re trying to recover a career. Recover a stallion career. Well, yes. Perhaps. Yeah, yeah, fair, yeah. If you'd asked me three months ago, maybe, or two months ago, which race would Mishrift be running in, I'd say, yeah, it'd be running on Breeders' Cup Saturday. Mm -hmm. be running 45 minutes later. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Be running in the Classic. Yeah. He isn't. He won't win this. Um, Nation's Pride against the three-year-olds in America discussed three-year-old middle-distance turf horses. What three-year-old middle distance? There is, there, there, I mean, he, he, I mean, he's two out of three in a very bad division. Yeah. Yeah, but he did. Well, I guess you could say yeah, he, he did. Beaten by daylight, but well, he beat Annapolis two starts ago. Yes. Over a trip turned, way too yeah, far. Yeah, who's not turned up here? Um, he could, also could, could he, he say he the same thing about your beer last year as well, though. Well, he could have. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. But okay, uh, but he was eight nine to one rather than nine to four, I guess. Uh, match okay. Match bet of two Appleby horses. Yeah. I'm not convinced Nation's Pride is the one I'd want to be on. In fact, I w I'll cut the chase. If I were playing this at the prices we've got, I'd actually split my stakes and I'd try to get myself a three-to-one winner with those prices. I'd take Warlike Goddess and I'd take Rebels Romance and I'd bat them by splitting my stakes. Well, let's have a fun little story, shall we? So a couple of years ago, Old Persian went and ran in the in the Grosse Prix von Ber Berlin. I mean, albeit finished behind a couple... You could say Baden-Baden Baden, then, wouldn't you? No. And Walton Street did the same thing, and he won. And then they both went to Canada, so a little bit of a 
distance, and then they started in the Breeders' Cup turf. And they're both actually still somewhere on those various tracks in the in the races. So this is the way that Charlie Appleby doesn't win the turf. Charlie's also on record as saying that Rebels Romance, and you can see it in the works, is a huge, mm. top, heavy horse. Probably German turf suited during the summer. Mm. He's actually a bit afraid of him being a little bit slow around the turns. That once he gets you know back on his right lead and starts to kick, the race has already developed well in front of him. I wouldn't be surprised to see him charging late, but even Appleby's thinking he's just going to, he's not the right type of horse physically to be getting around the turns. Yes, but let's bring global warming into this argument. You see, well, I, I mean, let's <laughs> keep it to the race. Is it like Mark, the cops? I mean, said, I mean. German turf of 2022 isn't yeah, the German not, turf yeah, of fair. 2018 or 19. Yeah, but yeah. it ain't Kentucky turf. It's, yeah, but it's loose. And that it's loose at, at Keeneland, but this he was not winning on bottomless <coughs> German turf that you would normally expect to see. Okay. He comes with a different German profile <laughs> than a lot of the others that have been described. Very well. I'm going to have to ring a bell here. Uh, and, uh, <laughs> We're going to fight. You, you carry on. <laughs> you can't go. Uh, Simon, please, we need a, we need a, we need I a, a, I mean, a, 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 a towel in here. <laughs> It's a fascinating debate, even to, just to try and work out the, the two athlete horses. I mean, Nation's Pride has been the better back to the last couple of days, nine to four. The, the In The Nose special is actually a Charlie Appleby special. Both Nation's Pride and Rebel Romance to be in the top four, to finish in the top four. That's two to one from six to four. I'm just going to throw one in here, which I know they'll have to check ahead. Mishriff, second in the John Monty, second in the Coral Eclipse, fourth in the Irish Champion, close up. Vadaini was third, mm. second in the Arc. I mean, he still is. If you t he's probably still the best horse in the race on ratings, isn't he? Yeah. I mean, and I mean like I said, if Yabir can do it, then Mishriff can do it, can't it? Well, so Dangerous Midge, Red Rocks, I wouldn't get too hung up <laughs> on the sort of horses who can win a Breeders' Cup turf. Yeah, yeah, you know yeah, I mean? yeah, like, yeah, yeah. It's more who's, who's the right horse. That, well, to be fair, what it says is actually you shouldn't necessarily go for the highest rated horse because that doesn't necessarily win the Breeders' Cup turf. But I wondered about Mishriff. I half wondered about Stone Age. Close, you know, wasn't beaten far in the, in the Irish champion. Um I, mean, look, Nick, I find it really tricky. Race. Nation's pride looks almost too obvious. And it, if you don't back him, Broom was second last year, like you said. So it's, a, it's, it's one of those funny races, this one. Yeah. I, I haven't got a strong opinion. OK, there we go. Uh, well, uh, let's get an opinion before we move on to the classic. Rachel? A uh, warlike goddess. Warlike goddess. Mark? A warlike goddess and rebels romance. At those odds, split your stakes. OK, Simon? Because I'm a, because I'm my, let my heart rule my head. I'm going to back Mishrif to end his career on a high. Okay, here you go. John John Gosden has done very similar things in the past. Just yeah. rock up horse, Frankie Dettori, first time headgear, blitzes from the front or whatever, and we all just sit back going. Go. Maestro's done exactly. it again. Maybe he exactly. Exactly. <laughs>